Jarrett Wade Brumette asks, um, going off of the study you shared earlier this week, uh, I'd really like to hear what the literature says about what the general public should do to improve the likelihood of maintaining weight loss. I, I think the study he's referring to was a study we shared uh, from the Instagram account, which was previously a mass research brief on um, resistance training, independently reducing visceral fat, uh, even in the absence of a uh, purposeful caloric deficit. I assume, I, I assume that's what's being referenced. Uh, or maybe a better question, what's the literature say to be predicting factors of regain that people should address when attempting weight loss? Maybe this was about something you posted. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, basically, what, what factors um, predict successful weight loss maintenance? I, I think that's essentially what's being asked here. Um, and so I, the, the first place my brain went to answer this question was to the National Weight Control Registry. What that is, uh, it's, it's an American thing, and you can apply to be a part of the registry if you're at least 18 years old and have lost at least 30 pounds and have maintained it for at least a year. So it, it's essentially a thing that you can just uh, opt into. And, and that is one thing to note. It's not a perfectly representative sample of everyone who's lost weight. It's a representative sample of everyone who's lost weight and knows what the National Weight Control Registry is. And wants to tell you about it. And wants to tell you about it. So, you know, this may not be the perfect sample for answering this question, but I, I think it's one of the better ones that exists. Yeah. Uh, so with, with that caveat out of the way, um, within the National Weight Control Registry, uh, they say there is a variety in how National Weight Control Registry members keep the weight off. Uh, most report continuing to maintain a low calorie, low fat diet and doing high levels of activity. And then just some notes, 78% eat breakfast every day, 75% weigh themselves at least once a week, 62% watch less than 10 hours of TV per week, and 90% exercise on average at least one hour per day. I don't know the degree to which all of those things are necessarily causal. I don't necessarily know that a low fat diet is better than a low carb diet for maintaining weight loss. I don't necessarily think that eating breakfast every day is important. So keep in mind, those are, those are correlative things, not causal things. People in the national weight control registry, those are the things that they report doing. Um, but one of the things from really every line of research I've seen looking at weight loss maintenance that seems to be a very important factor is exercise. Um, you know, you were just talking a second ago about how, how cool exercise is and all of its benefits. And I think that exercise gets kind of a bad rap in some circles for its impact on weight loss, because the research that's out there looking at the impact of just exercise on weight loss itself, isn't that promising? Like if you take people, uh, you know, just pluck them out of the general population and say, Hey, you're going to start exercising. Like, doesn't matter if it's high intensity interval training, doesn't matter if it's cardio, doesn't matter if it's resistance training, whatever. G generally what you see is like, yeah, maybe they'll lose a couple pounds, but not many. Uh, it doesn't seem to be an effective exercise only interventions don't seem to be effective standalone interventions for a large amount of long term weight loss. But exercise does seem to be very important for weight loss maintenance. Um, and I, I think that there are some reasons for that. One is uh, actually I could, I could talk about this for a long time, but I think the biggest reason why exercise is important for weight loss maintenance, um, you know, on, on top of it, just generally being good for you is exercise seems to regulate your hunger pretty well. So, um, you have kind of homeostatic, uh, weight mechanisms within your body where if everything is working appropriately, even without tracking your, your nutritional intake, on average, for most people, if you're reasonably active, your felt caloric needs should comport pretty well with your actual caloric needs for weight maintenance. Um, 
But if you're reasonably sedentary, those homeostatic weight regulatory factors can kind of get out of whack. And so basically, you just wind up being hungrier than you need to be for the actual number of calories that you're expending per day. So, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people who lose weight and then keep it off do also do some degree of purposeful nutritional regulation, whether that's a particular type of diet whether that's counting calories, like there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of methods people go with to lose the weight and, and keep it off on the nutritional side of things. But exercise just makes all of that work better because if you're exercising and you're in a small calorie deficit, you'll probably be less hungry than if you're not exercising and you're, and you're in a small calorie deficit. And then when you've lost a lot of weight and you're trying to keep it off, maintenance when you're when you've lost a lot of fat leptin levels are low hunger is probably going to be elevated uh exercise can kind of take the edge off of that and help those homeostatic uh hunger regulatory factors just work better um so yeah uh you know reducing sedentary time so a lot of these people report not watching a ton of television i think that's important uh, 75% weigh themselves at least once per week. You know, I, I think, uh, that kind of goes to the, to the adage of what gets measured, gets managed, like keeping a, an awareness of your weight. So it doesn't start creeping back up. I think that's probably pretty important. Uh, but I, I think if you were trying to narrow it down to just one thing, um, exercise seems to be like regularly exercising and not being sedentary seems to be, uh, quite important. Yeah. And if I could add one thing to kind of tie some concepts together, because I yeah. think if people are taking notes and they should be, I often say people should take notes when they listen to the show, they'll notice we've said a few things that on the surface sound to be a bit contradictory. So we talked about how the interference effect doesn't have a notable impact on hypertrophy. We've also talked about how generally speaking, being, you know, having a high physical activity level can help regulate hunger in uh, a caloric deficit in the context of weight loss but when i was talking about cardio during prep one of the things i kind of mentioned as an aside was uh, potentially how that can impact hunger responses in people doing physique prep and i think it's really important to highlight that the distinction there is the physiological context of doing contest prep so if the concurrent training literature was all done in people who were four and a half percent body fat and training their ass off and in a caloric deficit, I think we might see something going on with hypertrophy. Yeah. Um, and one of the things we see with key drivers of hyperphagia, the really pronounced hunger that occurs in, you know, physique or bodybuilding prep, one of the key drivers of hyperphagia is the loss of fat free mass. And so that's why you have to take these con these statements about the interference effect and the relationship between physical activity and hunger. Those are generally speaking, you know, the the more generalizable approaches to to those topics or kind of conclusions there, but when you put those into the context of someone who is doing contest prep, shredded, caloric deficit, all their hormones are out of whack. Their hypothalamus is completely checked out and they're overdoing their cardio. Now we see a, a slightly different response to how that excess, that excessive cardio can impact their hunger management. So I just wanted to, I, I wanted to make sure whenever I'm listening to a podcast and something at the beginning and something at the end seem contradictory and they don't draw it out for me, I get very frustrated. So the context, the, the physiological, uh, aspects that come with physique prep really do make it a very unique uh, context to talk about.